Welcome to Tony's Cool Tools. And if you're new, thanks for stopping by. I can't believe it. It's been a year since I've owned the Axis now, and I figured I'd do a review. A little backstory on the Axis. Prior to owning the Axis, I purchased a Easton made 1222 and owned that for two years. Awesome, awesome machine. However, I always wanted a vertical splitter. And unfortunately, when I purchased the 1222, Andrew had not designed the access yet. So I owned this for, or I owned the 1222 for two years. And as soon as Andrew came, Andrew from Easton Made came out with the access, I ordered one immediately. And I was fortunate enough to sell my 1222 within 15 minutes ironically. Now, if you want to check a full review on that, I worked with Chris from In the Woodyard, and we did an in-depth review last year on the Axis when I received it. So you can check out his channel, and he has that video on it. Well, let's start the 360 review. We'll start in the front first and work our way to the back. We'll start here with the log lift, which I think makes the Axis much different than any other splitter out there on the market. And that is a 32 by 32 table here. You can put a lot of wood on that before you're starting, as well as the table that is 20 and a half inches from front to back. So theoretically, you can get a 40 inch log there with no problem, and I do. If you're talking from the width of this all the way, you're talking 101 inches. So for a staging area, it's phenomenal. We'll start here, and these are pallet pockets. So if you have a skid steer or a tractor that is strong enough to pick that up, it's easy to move you're probably looking at about 1,800 pounds. My Coyote 40, uh, 4010 will not lift this. I tried, and even though it can lift 1,835 pounds, based on how high it has to lift, it just doesn't have that angle, or uh, have the height to pick it up. It does have a gauge for telling you the temperature of the hydraulic fluid. I will show you the foot pedal here. Unfortunately, it's on grass, so you can't see the movement, but it only moves one inch. So there's virtually little play in that, and you don't have to press down hard and get two to three inches before the uh, ram starts going up. It does have torsion suspension, and it actually trailers extremely well. Even though you have that big Goliath on the side, you know you're going down the road when you see that in your rear view mirror, but it tows extremely well. The other thing on the axis are these plates right here. They're called peelers. And the nice thing about this is if you get crotch wood or wood that jams onto your ram, as soon as this comes up, it hits the peelers and pops the, the uh, log off of the ram, which is extremely nice. I received a little pinwheel from um, Brittany from BNF Firewood. She thought it would make a good uh, a good item for the uh, Axis. I thank her for that. She came to take a test drive on it because she's getting her Axis in a month or two. Very easy controls to lift up or down on your uh, table here. I don't know another manufacturer that attaches a conveyor onto their 
um, to their splitter. I think uh, Easton Mate is one of the only ones. And on this one, it utilizes the 81X chain. This bar below is easy to grease, or should I say just put some oil on it, and that's all the lubrication it needs. It does come with pillow blocks, both at the bottom and the top on both sides. Easy adjustment right here. So far this year, I have not had to adjust it at all. Maintenance, as you can see, is easy by squirting some grease in the four Zerk fittings. It is powered by a two-speed winch here. These are very similar to log rights winches that they use on their log arches. Very quick and safe. Now we'll start on the powerhouse of the machine, the engine and everything behind the splitter. First we have the towing bar, which also acts as a theft deterrent by just removing it with the one pin and then storing this at a different location. It does use outriggers to level and raise the machine to the right height and level it so it's the logs are not falling in front. The unit is powered by a Briggs and Stratton Vanguard 14 horsepower motor. I wish Jerry with a G would, to would have told me that it has electric start because as we get older, we definitely like the conveniences. But this works fine with the pull start. The one issue that they were having initially was this muffler location of how this was coming up. Um, they found out, Joe from Ohio Woodburner found out that this was positioned directly to the inlet, the air inlet, and it was causing carbon fouling on the air filter and the engine was not running. When I received mine, it was pointing to the front of the machine and both Chris and I were getting headaches and in July we were sweating and that additional heat was causing some problems. This is not the, upper, uh, the optimal position. However, I store this inside so I'm not worried about rain getting in there and getting into the engine. Ideally, you would position it downward and I think that's the way they are now. But all it is is drilling a, an extra hole right there and repositioning it. Super, super easy. As far as the unit goes, you have the gauge for pressure. You also, for greasing purposes, both front and rear of these ways or these bars that guide the ram, that's where you grease them. And it goes all the way up there. The conveyor belt is controlled by this speed controller right here, either up or down. You really don't need to make it fling the wood right off the edge of it. Two reasons. One, uh, it's not practical. And two, the more you make or the more you go higher on this, the you're losing some power in the ram. So I keep this at like maybe a one or at most a number two when I'm using the conveyor. And you'll see when we're doing the live demonstration what I mean and how that works. This device is awesome. It's a limiter. It allows you to take the ram and lower it down to meet your wood. So if you are cutting your wood at 16 inches, you can lower this down to about 17 inches and gain that ram speed or uh, the timing because all it is going up is one inch. So you don't have to go all the way to the top of your ram, it shortens it. When you receive your unit, 
it more than likely will be two pieces. You'll get the axis and then you'll get the conveyor. It's super, super easy to install. You, you really need two people though. And there's one bar here, one bolt, one bar that goes all the way through on both sides here. And this bar that goes into this plate. That's it, nothing else. The controls are already attached, the hoses are attached. All you have to do is bolt this on, or this one screw right here, put this one screw in, put this in, and you're ready to go. Doesn't take much, but it, it looks intimidating when you don't have any instructions and um, you're by yourself. One thing about the Briggs & Stratton engine is it comes with a, uh, an oil plug that's right in here. Unfortunately, when you pull that down, all the oil travels over here onto this bar and it's real, real messy. Mike from k &L Firewood found this device online. It's called Drainsit, and it's really convenient to change the oil with this. So he had sent me one of these, which I thank him very much for. But you can uh, look at one of my videos that I have, and I do an oil change on it and explain, and uh, I'll put a link onto the, um, to the information sheet for the Drainsit. I install hour meters on all my engines just so I know when maintenance is necessary and to give me an idea on how many hours I'm working the unit, letting me know how much fuel I'm using at a given time. So as far as fuel is concerned, this unit full, I get about two hours and 45 minutes somewhere in that area of continual splitting. Based on the serial number, my axis looks to be the 22nd unit built. Enough talking about features and benefits. Let's go out and use the unit and show you what it does. This is the wood we're going to be using. It's ash from Logger John. I purchased, purchased it last year. Um, I want to say uh, in uh, August or September, I cut it and then um, about November or so, I had it all stacked up here. Didn't have time to split it, so it's been under cover for that time. This is how I stage my machine before I even start cutting. I don't know of any other machine in the industry that has the ability to do this. What you see here is approximately half of a face cord that's on here. I don't have to move to go to different places or behind me or whatever. It's right up in front of me. Makes life a whole lot easier and you'll see how quickly it goes. What I'm going to do is I have two IBC totes. One IBC tote I will have for premium bundle wood. The other will go, the other pieces of wood that I don't feel are good enough for the bundle wood will go up the conveyor and into the IBC tote. So I'll have two of them, one with the IBC and one by itself. I had mentioned previously that I will show you how the control for the conveyor works. Let me turn on the machine and we'll activate that and show you how quickly or how slowly it works.
will put some PPE on and start splitting.
it's been about 20 minutes since I started this. I didn't set the timer, but I got a rough idea of what it was. And here is the pile that we had. I had said that it made what I had on top of the machine about a half of a face cord, but since I piled it up a little bit more, um, as you can see, it does about a face cord and a third. That's what I got for the bundle wood. And here are the rejects, crotches and parts and pieces that I'm not going to... I'll use this for my own outdoor wood boiler. There were two issues that I had with the access. The first I mentioned was the muffler pointing towards the front instead of towards the back or bottom. The second was the conveyor. Uh, when you split something and just put it in the front here, a bunch of pieces would have to get together before it would all take it up as opposed to just taking a piece at a time, which I felt it should. I believe that there was enough people commenting about this that the uh, Andrew redesigned it and has a new, uh, a new chain that takes that into consideration. And that is n not an issue anymore. Now the questions. Did I make the right decision? Was the vertical better than the horizontal? For me, yes, on both of them. It was everything I thought of, and it works well. When you're in the zone, I know I can do a face cord in about 18, between 17 and 18 minutes. And that's staging the wood on the platform as you see it here. So I would definitely look into an access if you like to stand and not bend over when you're splitting wood. I'm 6'3", and the table here is the right height for me. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And remember, pass it forward. Make the world a better place. And until next time, thanks for watching.